Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. I thought I would sit down and do a video for you guys and gals. Let me get a sip of my water first. Get my radio voice going and let's talk about this. All right. You know, I made some videos in the, in the last couple of days. Well, I didn't make some, some of them I made over a month ago, but they hit today. You know, that people bring up, but Jason, if we're going to say that data is what we should be looking at for a lot of these things, particularly when it comes to supplements, particularly when it comes to food, which is what I do say. They're like, well, then what about the problem with uh, creatine and fish oil? You know, a lot of that has, has not turned out so good and we trusted the science. So what do you say about that? And I had someone ask that. And I think that's a great question to cover. Um, and the problem there was not so much with the data the problem was that the conclusions that people drew from that data, okay? And this is why it's important to look deeper into data because you have to then trust the people who are making the conclusions, which is why when we start looking at things like uh, financial bias, it becomes kind of a big deal, right? Like for example, when people have that one meta-analysis claiming that there's no link between red meat and diabetes funded by beef and pork organizations, primary financial supporters that conflicts with enormous amounts of other studies that show the exact opposite, right? That's their conclusions based upon uh, their gathering of the data. But we've got very, very large scale studies, extremely large scale studies, showing stuff like people with the highest intakes of red meat have a 62% higher rate of type 2 diabetes, right? And we know the mechanisms by which it contributes. This has been found directly in the metabolic warden measurements. We know how it contributes to it. Like, so we have causation. So that's what I mean by looking at the conclusions people are drawing. Um, but let's look at those two specific ones because that's a great question. Uh, because one of it is lack of the best ability to measure stuff, right? Equipment limitations. The other is misunderstanding the data, not actually looking at the data and making assumptions that weren't fully supported by the data, only by an incomplete look at the data. So the creatine, let's look at that first. And the studies are showing creatine helps with muscle. We need to be clear there. It's just that it's very disappointing for people like me who've been supplement skeptics a really long time, who really got ripped off when they were younger. I want people to understand, when I make those statements, when I was in my early 20s, I spent hundreds if not thousands of dollars on supplements, just like everyone else, because I was young and I even didn't know better. I mean, I was literally the guy, and I'm saying the protein might've actually been good, but I was one of those guys who's like, oh man, we got to get 50 to 100 grams of whey protein immediately post-workout in the gym, but then we got to mix all these other things with it. I used to put like 10 grams of creatine in it, 30 grams of glutamine, a couple other amino acids. I don't even remember now what I was throwing in there, arginine or whatever. And then it turns out stuff like glutamine doesn't help at all with muscle growth. And then we, we know why it doesn't. And again, I've, that's something I've discussed in details. So I, I do want people to understand I have been part of this. I've also used early on one of the supplements that was so good that it got outlawed at the federal level for being in competition with pharmaceutical drugs. And that was ephedra. Yeah, it, it was a legitimate weight loss uh, product. Studies confirmed it worked. Six months later, it was completely outlawed in the United States at the federal level. Okay, so creatine, it just doesn't work as well as we thought. So we had all these study after study after study after study after study showing this, this benefit. And then it turns out what they've speculated looking at the later data, it was still intramuscular water. So most of the muscle growth that we thought was there was really intramuscular water. So it turns out it's something like 20% as effective as we thought it was for decades. This is what the newest data is showing. And that's so disappointing. And it used to be, creatine was really cheap a long time. That seemed like a couple of years ago, the price shot up. Um, so then, you know, you're paying more money for way less of, of, for something that was already a mild benefit. Uh, it's, it's just frustrating to people. But here's what I did have someone point out. Uh, I saw one expert point out the other day on that topic. 
he goes, okay, so so what? Let's say that this data is true, that maybe over the entire course of your training life, creatine might contribute to one pound of extra muscle. That's number one, that's still better than any other supplement in the world going to do other than again possibly protein depending on what's going on with your diet that's more than any other supplement number one number two he's like well do you want the pound of muscle or don't you he, he's like and, and that's also a valid point okay so so what it turns out to be a minuscule amount you get maybe maybe let's say you get a pound out of it over the course of your entire training life 10 years 20 years whatever do you want the pound or not okay maybe it's not that great but it's still a pound of muscle. How much work have a lot of us put in for a pound of muscle? I mean, a valid point, but it is disappointing. Um, the fish oil, the problem is fish oil does have a medical benefit in a pharmaceutical context. We'll get to that in a second. The data, here's the problem. People saw the data and said, aha, the supplementation must be good. Why? Because we in the supplement well, not me, because I'm not in the supplement world. The fitness world, we want there to somewhere be some holy grail of supplements, and we really want it. But a number of registered dietitians, researchers, and experts have pointed out the data has never supported fish oil. All of you were interpreting it as pro fish oil. The data has never supported that. The science doesn't support it. What the data showed was that these health benefits, lower inflammation, lower cardiovascular disease, all these things occurred in populations of people or in people who had higher intakes of omega-3. Okay, we need to be clear. That is what they said. All the people out there then said, well, wait, EPA and DHA are probably the best ones. We do need those. They're the hardest to get. So therefore, if we're supplementing fish oil, that must have this effect because it's omega-3. And if higher intakes equal better, supplementing must produce the same thing as higher intakes. Well, that's not what they found. What they found was that it, when the data was then dug closer, it's just because people who eat whole foods with a lot of it. So you're actually getting a lot more for one. Okay, people need to remember that. Uh, the amount of fish oil that you would have to consume to get the equivalent amount of fish oil that's in if you ate a pound of salmon once or twice a week, you'd be, you'd be eating that whole bottle. <laughs> you'd be eating that whole bottle every week. I don't think people realize how much actual fish oil and fish fat is in salmon. Uh, it's not, one big salmon filet is not the equivalent of three of your fish oil gaps. It, it's a lot more. Uh, same thing with a lot of other omega-3s, okay? Like what? Walnuts black seeds, tofu, all those things have really large amounts of it. Keep in mind, ALA has a ton of health benefits that has been found. So the thing is, is number one, possibly a load of it. Number two, maybe there's something happening different with the whole foods versus a supplement. Number three, there is a use, and this is what cardiologists and other experts have said. They're like, well, the reason people aren't seeing the benefits because the fish oil studies show nothing. There is no correlation with fish oil intake and these health benefits. When it's taken out of omega-3s as a whole and just fish oil supplementation was looked at, the data just doesn't support it. And so, therefore, that's the issue. So people, hopefully, they understand that it's, the data was not wrong. It was our interpretation of perfectly good data. Now, with the cardiologists and other people who use fish oil for prescriptions point out, the amount you're getting from the supplements not enough to get the effect I want in my heart patients. It's, it's just not enough unless you're taking like 10 of those every single day, every day for six months straight. Because what they're saying is that's just not enough. They're like, you actually need a minimum of two grams of combined EPA and DHA every single day. Well, you start looking at some of your fish oils, you start saying, wait, there's only like, uh, whatever, 180 milligrams in my particular capsule of, of actual EPA and DHA. You start doing the math. It's like, man, I need 12 of these every day for six months. And the benefit is not massive. The benefit, what they found, and they find with their patients, it lowers triglycerides. So in cardiac patients with elevated triglycerides, high dose EPA and DHA 
again, two grams or more a day, lowers triglycerides. So that lowers their cardiovascular risk. Okay. So we'd be back over to, if you're trying to get that from eating fish, you'd be eating, you know, a small filet every single day. Salmon. Again, one of the higher omega-3 fat fishes. So the issue, the issue there is number one, dosing uh, is probably a huge factor. Number two, the when supplements are looked at separately from it being found in Whole Foods, it's a different data set. Again, the data wasn't incorrect in this case. We misinterpreted it as all omega-3s must include the supplements as well. We, count, we were counting it as one data set. People were in general, including a lot of experts. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.